The Siyata Dishmaya, we're going to learn Shabbos Tafchof Aleph. We're going to start at the very top of the Omud. Says the Gemara Tonu Rabbonon, Kol Eilu Sheomru. All the things we mentioned in the Mishnah, whether it's the wicks that you're not allowed to use on Shabbos or the oils that you're not allowed to use on Shabbos, Ein Madlikin Ben Bashabbos, and you're not allowed to use them to light a candle with on Shabbos, for Shabbos, Avel Oisin Mehen Madura. A big bonfire, a large fire, where there's a lot of twigs, a lot of woods, a lot of logs, and each burning piece of wood is going to ignite the other piece of wood. There's no reason to suspect that the fire is going to get extinguished, and therefore we're not worried you're going to play with the fire on Shabbos, and therefore you're allowed to use them for a big bonfire, for a, for a large fire. Bainless, Hamim Kenegdo, irrespective if you want the this big fire in order to warm up with it. Bain Lish Tamish Lairo, if you want it to be a large source of light, it's mutter. Bain al Gabi Karaka, irrespective of whether this big fire is on the floor, on the ground, Bain al Gabi Kira, or if it's inside a stove, inside an oven. The wicks that we discussed are only osa to make from them wicks in a candle that was going to be floating inside the oil, some, something that's going to get absorbed into the wick. It may not get absorbed so well, and therefore you may tilt it, and you'll be over on lighting a fire on Shabbos. But a big flame where you don't have this issue, a big fire, it's muta. Continues the Gemara. We saw in the Mishnah that you're not allowed to use shemen kik, the oil, the fats of kik, as oil for lights on Shabbos. Ask the Gemara, my shemen kik, what is this shemen kik? I asked all the sailors, all those that go down to the sea, if they know what it is. And they said to me, there's a bird in the seaport cities, the kik shmoi, and the name of that bird is kik, and using the fats of that bird is what the Mishnah says is called shemen kik, and you're not allowed to use those fats as oil for lights that are going to be burning on Shabbos. It's the oil that comes from cotton seed, that's the shemen kik mentioned in the Mishnah. Rishlokish Omar. Rishlokish says, Kikoyoin de Yoino. It's a type of wood, a type of tree, a very tall tree, one that Yoino Hanovi saw in his dream that we read on Yom Kippur in Sefer Yoino. Omar Rabbi Barbarchono, Ledidi Chozili Kikoyoin de Yoino. I saw such a plant that Yoino Hanovi saw in his dream. Velitz Luliva Domu. And it was very similar <coughs> to to a wood, to a tree that we know is called Tzluliva. Umidaposki rovi. It grows near the ponds or in the ponds. Vaalpum chanusa madlon yose. And one commonly hangs its branches on the doors of one's stores because it, it makes a nice smell. Umida umiparzidoihi. And from its kernels of the mishchi, they make oil. And under its branches, the sick people from Eretz Yisrael are commonly resting underneath the branches of this tree. Continues the Gemara, Omar Rabba. Says Rabba, What's the reason why all those wicks mentioned at the beginning of our Mishnah, you're not allowed to use them for candles that are going to be lit on Friday night? It's because the fire flickers on them, and since the fire is not a nice, stable light, you may come to tilt it, and you'll be over the malacha of havora, of kindling on Shabbos. The list in the Mishnah of oils that you're not allowed to use for these candles. Why? They do not get drawn nicely into the wicks. They do not get absorbed well in the wicks. And again, the light will not be a comfortable one, and you may come to tilt the candle on Shabbos. Continues the Gemara. 
All those oils that the Mishnah said you're not allowed to use on Shabbos. What would be the halacha if you added enough oils from those oils that are permitted to be used on Shabbos, you add it into the oils that are not permitted to be used on Shabbos, and you add enough until the mixture is one that's going to be absorbed well in the wick, and therefore there will not be an issue of tilting the candle on Shabbos. Are you allowed to use such a mixture or not? The Yadlik, he wants to light with it. Migos Rinon, do we make a gzeira? Dilma osiled luke be'inayhu, that you may come to use these oils on their own without adding in the oils that are stabilizing it, and therefore the Chachomim should say you're not allowed to use them even when they are mixed in with the good oils? Or do we say no? A person will know that this is only mutter, it's only okay because other oils have been mixed into it, and now it burns nicely, but on their own it's osa. Omali. So Rabbah responded to Abaya, Ein Madlikin, you're not allowed to use this mixture of oil on Shabbos, for Shabbos, Maitama, Lefisha Ein Madlikin on. Since you're not allowed to use these oils on their own, therefore the Chachomim said you're not even allowed to use them as part of a mixture when other oils are with it. Eisve, Abaya is now asking a question on Rabbah. We learnt in a Braisa, Korach dovor shemadlikin boy al gabe dovor shein madlikin boy. If somebody wraps a wick, which one is allowed to use on Shabbos, onto a type of wick which you're not allowed to use on Shabbos, then the Tanakhama say ein madlikin boy. You're not allowed to use such a wick on Shabbos. Amr Reb Shimon ben Gamliel. Reb Shimon ben Gamliel argues and says shall base Abba. In my father's home, the custom was they would wrap a wick, which you were allowed to use on Shabbos, they would wrap it onto a nut. A nut cannot be used as a wick. And they would nonetheless, they would be allowed to use this wick. Madlikin. So you see from the witness, from what Rabbim Gamliel has said, that even though you've wrapped a psilo that's muta onto something that cannot be used as a wick, you're allowed to do that on Shab- for Shabbos. So too with us. Rap- using the oils that are generally not al- able or allowed to be used on their own and mixing them in with oils that are allowed to be used, it's mut- it's, it should be mutter. Omar um, Leh, Rabbi answers to Abaya, ben Gamliel, instead of asking a question on me from Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel, why don't you bring a proof to what I'm saying that it's Osa from the Tanakama? The Tanakama said that Korach Dovor Shemadlikin Boy Al Gabu Dovor Shein Madlikin Boy Ein Madlikin Boy. The Tanakama said it's Osa, like I Rabbi said. Holy Kashi Abayah says, don't ask me a question why I'm bringing proof and asking a question on you from Rav Shem Ben Gamliel. My Serav, <coughs> since he is telling us a story that happened from the minig of his father, so you see that's the halacha. That's why I'm asking you from Rav Shem Ben Gamliel. Mikol Mokim Kashya. But either way, you Rabbi have to now answer the question. My love lahadlik. Are we not assuming that Rab Shimon ben Gamliel, what he's actually saying in the name of his father was that they would wrap the wick onto the onto this nut and they would use it as a wick, even though the nut on its own right would not be a wick. Is that not proof against you, Rabbah? Says the Gemara and Loi, Lehakfois. The truth is they did not use this nut as a wick at all. They only used the wick, which was a wick that was allowed to be used. Why did they wrap it around the nut? It was lahak place, just so that the wick would stay afloat. They used it as a float, not as a wick. And indeed, if they would wrap the the psila onto the nut and use the nut as, as the wick itself, then possibly even Rav Shimon ben Gamliel would hold that you're not allowed to use it. And then that would be proof to Rabbah and not a question on Rabbah. Asks the Gemara, If indeed the only part that you're lighting, the only part that's being used as a wick, is the part that's the psila, that's a kosher wick, and they've just wrapped it round the nut as a float, why do the Tanakama say, Ein madlikin boy? 
Says the Gemara, Kula Rab Shimon ben Gamliel he. It's all Rab Shimon ben Gamliel. There's no machlekus there. The chesure mechzer of a hochik toni. You have to add some words of explanation in the brisa, then you'll understand it. And it goes as follows: Korach dovor she madlikin boy al gabu dovor she ein madlikin boy. If you wrap a wick that can be used on Shabbos and you wrap it round something that cannot that cannot be used on Shabbos, ein madlikin boy, you're not allowed to use this wick on Shabbos. When is that true? This is what the Gemara is explaining that we have to add into the Brisa. When is that true? Only when you're using both wicks to be a wick for this candle. If you wrap the wick around a nut or something that's going to just keep it afloat, then you're allowed to use such a wick. And the reason is because of Shem ben Gamliel would say that the customers shall base Abba in his father's house, they would wrap a wick onto a nut in order to keep it afloat, and it was okay. They permitted them to do that. <coughs> Continues the Gemara, we're asking another question on Rabba. You Rabba say that if you have oils that are muta, mixed with oils that are osa, you're not allowed to use them on Shabbos. The Omer of Baroino Amarav, did we not learn in the name of Rav that Chelev Muhutoch, these are fats that have been melted, the Kirvei Dogim Sheni Moichu, and the insides of fish that have become dissolved, Odom Noisin Letoichoi Shemen Kolshu, even though they are not allowed to be used on their own as oil for candles on Shabbos, but you're allowed to add in oils that are mutter to be used and add in enough of such an oil that the whole mixture will now burn nicely, it will get nicely absorbed in the wick, and it's mutter, or madlik, and he's allowed to light with it. And this seems to be contrary to what Rabbi said before. Says the Gemara, Hani mimshechi ba'inayhu, v'hani loy mimshechi ba'inayhu. The truth is, chaylev muhutach, which is fats that have been melted, and kirvei dogim sheni moichu, the insides of fish that have become dissolved, they themselves are good oils that can be well absorbed into, in the wicks. V'hani loy mimshuchi ba'adayhu. What Rabbi was talking about was using oils that on their own right would not be absorbed well in the wick and then he says adding in oil that will make it absorb well is not enough and it'll still be osa and the only reason the gozul rabbonon al chaylev muhutach the only reason you're not allowed to use this melted fats is mishum chaylev she'ene muhutach it was a gezeira because you might use these fats when it's not melted and the chaylev which is not melted does not get absorbed well into the wicks and they are osa the insides of the fish that have become dissolved, they themselves are okay. They burn nicely. And the Chachomim said you should not use them because you might get confused with Mishum Kirvei Dogim Shaloini Moichu. You might use the, oil, the insides of the fish that have not been Nimoichu, have not been dissolved. Uh, and Asks the Gemara that at the end of the day, Tachlis, the Chachomim say that Chelev Muhutach and Kirvei Dogim Sheni Moichu are not allowed to be used. So adding in oils that are allowed to be used, why should that be okay? Make a gzeira that chelev muhutach with other oils should be asa, so that you shouldn't use the chelev muhutach. The kirvei dogim sheni moichu with other oils should be asa, because you might use the kirvei dogim, which are nimoichu, without the other oils. Says the Gemara, he gufa gzeira, chelev muhutach itself is a good oil, it's only osir as a gazera because of chaylev she'ene muhutach. Kirvei dogim sheni moichu are only osir otu kirvei dogim she'loyne moichu. Vanan neikam v'nigzer gzera le gazera. If you add in oils that are okay into these oils that are also okay but only osir on their own because you might make a mistake with oils that are not okay, this is a double gazera. We don't make a double gazera, and therefore, if you add in good oil into chelev muhutach and kirvei dogim sheni then 
there's no gazera and it's mutter. And it's not similar to the case that Rabbah was talking about, where you're mixing in the good oils into oils that they themselves do not burn nicely on Shabbos. <coughs> Continues the Gemara. Tony Romi Bar Choma. Those wicks and oils that the Chachomim said you're not allowed to use for candles that will burn on Shabbos, you're not allowed to use those wicks or those oils in the Menorah, in the Beis HaMikdosh. <coughs> Why? Because it says in the Pasuk, that the the, the flame has to go up, has to raise up constantly from the Menorah. He brought this drasha and he explained, what do we mean? Tomid means that the flame has to go up on its own right. And not that it should flicker and need help externally that a person should have to tilt it and move it and help the oils be absorbed in the wicks and help the wicks burn nicely no it has to be a type of flame that once it's a light it it's ignited and lights perfectly nicely on its own right and therefore all those psilois and shmonim that are not allowed to be used on shabbos and the reason is because it's not lighting nicely and you might interfere with it on Shabbos if you might interfere with it then it does not conform to and therefore it's also even in the Menorah in the Beis HaMikdosh continues the Gemara Tnan we learnt in a Mishnah from the worn out the trousers the pants of the and from their belts Hoyu Mafkian, they would tear them, or mehen madlikin, and from them they would make wicks and light the the candles in Simchas Beis Hasha'eva, where there would be outside in the Azora and there's just Noshim, there would be very tall candles, not the Menorah inside the the Heichel, and they would use these wicks for those candles. And we know that the Michne Seikoyanim Umehem Neem, they had wool in them. And we saw in the Gemara on Daf Chofam at base at the bottom that using wool, Tzemer, Hoisifu Aleim Shel Tzemer, that using wool, you're not allowed to use them as wicks for, the, for, for Shabbos. So why could you use them for the torches in the Beis Amigdash, for the Simchas Beis HaSheiva? Says the Gemara, Simchas Beis HaSheiva Shani. Since it's not talking about the Menorah, and the whole Simchas Beis HaSheiva, or lighting the candles at the Simchas Beis HaSheiva, is not Min HaTayra. There's no posuk that says, Laha lo is neir tomid. And therefore, you can use these wicks for those candles in the Azar, outside, in the Chotzer, and as is Nashim, for Simchas Beis HaSheiva. Continues the Gemara, Toshima, the Toni Rabbe Bar Masna, Big Day Kuhuna Shebolu the clothes of the Kayanim that had become worn out, Mafkin Oison, they would tear them into strips, Umehen Hoyu Oisim Psilo Islamikdosh, and they would use them for the wicks, for the manure in the base Amigdosh. My love, the Kilaim, is it not talking about those garments that also had wool in them? So you see that you can use wicks of wool even the in the base Amigdosh for the manure, even though you're not allowed to use them on Shabbos. Says the Gemara, no, Loi the boots, it's talking about the the Ksoynes is talking about the clothes of the Kayanim that were made that had linen, not those that had wool, and the linen itself is a kasha wick. Continues the Gemara. Omar of Huna Psilois Ushmanim Shaomru Chachomim Ein Madlikin Ben Bashabas, those wicks and oils that the Chachomim said you're not allowed to use on Shabbos because they do not burn nicely and you may come to tilt them on Shabbos, and that's severely also. Ein madlikin ben b'chanukah, you're not allowed to use them either for lighting the menorah, <coughs> which we do every year, on Chanukah. Bein b'shabbos, irrespective of Shabbos Chanukah, bein b'choyl, all the other days of Chanukah. Omar Rabba, my Tamad Ravuna, uh, Omar Rava, my Tamad Ravuna, Rav is now going to explain this halacha of Ravuna, Kosova, he holds Kovsa in the event that one of the candles or all the candles of the Menorah get extinguished. Zokuklo, you are obliged to relight it. And since you're obliged to relight it, you may not relight it. You may just 
neglect them and not relight them. And therefore, using such candles on the weekdays of, Shab- of, of Hanukkah, since these oils and wicks do not burn nicely, they may get extinguished. And the halacha is that you have to reignite them and you might just not reignite them. Therefore, do not use such oils and wicks on Hanukkah. And, and they hold that one is allowed to use the light of the menorah just for one's own personal use. And therefore, <coughs> on Shabbos, you may end up using that light. And since these lights are not burning nicely, they have the same halachas as any other candles on Shabbos. You, you may tilt them and be over on Loisavaru Eish on Shabbos. In the event, and we're going to see such a such an opinion soon. In the event that it was also to use to use these candles, the Chanukah candles on Shabbos, then the fact that it's not burning nicely will not bother you because you won't tilt them. You're not allowed to use the light anyway for your own use. But since this Manda Omar, since Rav Huna holds the one is allowed to use the candle on Shabbos, the Chanukah lights, you're allowed to have Hana from them all of Hanukkah, then on Leil Shabbos you'll try and have Hanar from them, they will flicker, you'll end up tilting them a little bit, and that's going to be Asa, and therefore you're not allowed to use such oils or wicks on, on Hanukkah, even on Shabbos. Rav Chizda, Omar, Rav Chizda argues with, with Rav Huna and says, Madlikin behen b'choyl. You're allowed to use these wicks and oils on the weekdays of Hanukkah, avaloi b'Shabbos, but not for Shabbos Hanukkah. Kosova, he holds Kovsa in Zokuklo. As long as you've lit the menorah, even if it gets extinguished, you're not obliged to, or you're not obligated to relight it. And therefore, use these candles, and it doesn't burn nicely, it'll get extinguished. Okay, you're not Mukhoyev to reignite them, so nothing can go wrong. That's okay. But on Shabbos, we have an added problem that since he holds that you're allowed to use Hanukkah candles for your own use, therefore, if you're trying to use them on Shabbos, then the, the candle, which is not burning nicely because you're using these, wo- these oils and these wicks, you may come to tilt the candle on Shabbos. And that's also. And therefore, he says you're only allowed to use these wicks and oils on the weekdays of Hanukkah and not on the Shabbos. In the weekday, obviously, if you're trying to use the Hanukkah lights for your own use and it doesn't burn nicely and you tilt it a little bit, you've not transgressed any melochas of Shabbos. It's a weekday. And therefore, you're allowed to use it during the week, just not on Shabbos. Omer Rabzeira, Omer of Masna, Omer Lom Rabzeira, Omer Rav. Rabzeira said either in the name of Rav Masna or in the name of Rav, he said a third opinion. The wicks or oils that the Chachomim said you're not allowed to use on Shabbos, Madlikin Ben Bechanuka, you're allowed to use them on Chanukah, Bein Bechoyl, Bein Bechabbos, also during the week and also on Shabbos. Omer Abirmia, Abirmia says, My Tamadarav, well, how do we understand that? Kosova Kovso Ein Zokuklo. Number one, he holds that if the Chanukah candles get extinguished, you're not obligated to rekindle them. And therefore, Use these oils and wicks that are not going to burn nicely. Who else comes to us? They'll get extinguished. It's okay. You're not mechuyev to do more than that. He holds you're not allowed to use the Hanukkah candles for your own use at all. And therefore, even on Shabbos, you won't come to use it for your own. And therefore, even if it doesn't burn nicely, you will not come to tilt those candles in order to have a better light because you're not allowed to use them anyway. And therefore, for the Hanukkah Menorah, you're allowed to use them even on Friday night. Continues the Gemara. The Chachomim, who was sitting in front of Abaya, told Abaya the reasoning, the explanation that Rabbi Yirmiya gave for Rav's Halacha. He didn't trust what Rav Yirmiya explained. He didn't accept it. He didn't accept it. Later on, when Ravin came, then the halacha was said to Abaya in the name of Rabbi Yechanan. The Kibla and Abaya accepted it. Omar and Abaya added and said, Izakoi, if I would have had the merit, Gemirte Lishmaite Meikora, I would have accepted it back then when I heard it in the name of, of Rabbi Yirmiya. But I didn't have the schus, and therefore I only accepted it now. In the name of Rabbi Yechanan, ask the Gemara of our Gomorrah. 
At the end of the day, you accepted the halacha, you accepted the reasoning. What's the difference if you accepted it now in the name of Rabbi Yechanan or back then in the name of Rabbi Umya? Says the Gemara, Nafkamina le Girasudiankusa. We know that the things a person studies when he's younger, they get absorbed better in the mind, they get remembered longer. And he says, It's a shame that I didn't have the schus back then when I was younger to absorb this halacha. And now when I'm older, I've, I'm going to try my best to absorb it, but I've lost that advantage. Continues the Gemara. The Kov Sa'in Zokukla. Can it be that there's an opinion that says that if the Hanukkah candles get extinguished, that you do not have to reignite them? Or Aminu, this seems to be a contrary to a Brisa. Mitzvah saw the mitzvah of lighting the menorah on Hanukkah, Mishatish Ka'achamo, from when the sun sets, and everybody knows there's an argument, is this Shkia, is it Tzeis HaKechovim, but from when the sun sets, Ad Shatich Regel Min Ashuk, until there are no more feet, no more people in the marketplace, that's when you have to have the lights lit on Hanukkah. My love, so we assume that what the Brisa means is, the Ikovsa, Hodor Madlikla, you have to make sure that the candles are burning from Shkia Sachamo, Tishkia Chamo, until Tichle Regel Minashuk. And if the candles extinguish in between, you have to relight them. And this is contrary to the concept of Kovsa Einzokukla, says the Gemara Loi. No. The Eloi Adlik Madlik. When it says that the mitzvah of Hanukkah candles is from Tishke Achamo until Tichle Regel Minashuk, it's not telling you that it has to be lit all that time. It's saying that any time in that time frame you're, you're allowed to light the candles. If you miss that time frame, then you've missed your mitzvah of lighting Hanukkah candles. It's telling you what time you're allowed to kindle. It's not telling you how long the candles have to be on for. Inami. Or a second explanation in that brisa, le shiura, to tell you how much oil you have to put in. You have to put in enough oil that the menorah potentially could be a light from Tishka Achamo till Tichle Regel Minashuk. But if coincidentally, because the flames were not burning nicely, because it was windy, whatever it is, the flames extinguished, assuming that they could have been a light, if you're lighting in a place where you know it's going to be extinguished, you could, it could well be that you're not Yaitza. But if you were not careless and you lit it, you have to use enough oil that potentially it could have stayed alight for that time. It went out. You're not, you're not obligated to relight the candles. Continues the Gemara. We saw in the Brisa that the mitzvah of lighting Hanukkah candles is all the while that people are still in the marketplace. How long is that? What is that? Ad de Kalyo Riglo de Tarmudoi. The feet, the merchants from a place called Tarmudoi, they would come and sell firewood to the town's people. And they would be hanging around in the marketplace waiting for people to go home at the end of their day, light their fires, see if they need any more wood, and then they would come to the marketplace and buy the wood from these people. So all the while that these people from Tarmudoi are still in the marketplace, then you're still required to the mitzvah of Hanukkah. When even they have left the marketplace, then that's it, then the streets are desolate, and there's no more Pirsume Nissa, and there's no more reason or ability to light the Hanukkah candles if you haven't done it yet. And we're learning the sugi at face value, we're not translating it into contemporary situation and circumstances that when it comes to Hanukkah and you learn the contemporary poiskim and see how to apply this Gemara in practical terms. Continues the Gemara. Tonu Rabbonon. Mitzvah's Hanukkah, the Ikra Adin, the minimum requirement on Hanukkah of lighting the Menorah. Neir is a single candle, Ish Ubeisoy, and that's enough for a person and his whole household. The whole home, one candle, every day just one candle. Doesn't matter how many days they've been, it doesn't matter how many people there are. Vahamahadrin, and those who pursue mitzvahs and want to do mitzvahs in the best fashion, neir lekol echod echod. For every member of the household, they put one candle each night. So if you have three people in the home, then you light three candles on day one, and three candles on day two, and three candles on day three, etc. Vahamahadrin, mina mahadrin, and those who pursue mitzvahs even more, here we have a machlekus between Beis Shammai and Beis Hillel. Beis Shammai Umrim, Yom Rishon Madlik Shmoina. On the first day you light eight candles. 
Mikan ve'elech peiches ve'elech. And every day you light one less. On day two you light seven candles. On day three you light six candles, etc. Beisidl say no. They say yoyim rishon madlik achas. On the first day you light one candle because one day has passed, one chiyuv has passed. Mikan ve'elech from that day on moisif ve'elech. Every day you light an extra candle. On day two you light two. On day three you light three, which is what we do in Lemaisa. Oma ula pligi ba tre amiroi be marova. There were two amiroi in Eretz Yisrael who argued. Rabbi Yosi bar Ovin, Rabbi Yosi bar Zvida. Two Rabbi Yosi's, one Rabbi Yosi bar Ovin, the other one was Rabbi Yosi bar Zvida. They argued as to the reasoning behind the opinions of Bishamai and Bishilol. Chad Omar, one of them claimed. Tama de Bishamai, the source of Bishamai who says you do 8765. We see how many days there still are in front of us. On the first day, there's eight days in front of us. On the second day, there's only seven days in front of us. So you count how many days in front of us, and that's how many you light. But Tama de Bishilil, and the reason of Bishilil is Keneged Yomim is we're counting the days that have already passed. On day one, the first day is behind us. On day two, it's now the second day behind us. And the, the day that you light is considered as being behind us. So on day one, you have one. On day two, two, etc. V'chad Omar. The other Amoira explained that Tamar de Beis Shammai, the reason of Beis Shammai that we go 8, 7, 6, we go in order, going downwards, is Keneged Pori Achag. There's some similarity between the Menoira on Hanukkah and the animals, the korbonis that were that were shechted on in the base amigdosh on Sukkot, and the same way as the pori hachag on Sukkot were mismait vahilich, as is apparent in Parashas Pinchas. On the first day there would be fourteen oxen, on the second day there would be thirteen, etc. So too with Hanukkah, you go from the most down. With Tamar de Beis Hillel, the reason for Beis Hillel, to Malin B'Kodesh Ve'in Meridin, when it comes to Kedusha, you always go up, you always add. You start with one, two, three, and we keep moving up. Continues the Gemara, Omar Rabbi Bar Barachon, Omar Rabbi Eichron. Shnei Zekeinim Hoyu B'Tzidon, there were two elders in Tzidon. Echod Osok Beis Shammai, one of them did like Beis Shammai. On the first day he lit eight, on the second day seven, etc. The Echad also Hillel, the other one did like Bis Hillel, that on the first day he lit one, on the second day two, etc. Zen Tam Lidvarov, the one that did like Bis Shammai said that the reason was Keneget Pori Hachag, it's like the animals that were shechted in the Beis Hamikdash on Sukkot, the oxen that was started 14 and the second day 13 and went downwards. The Zeno in Tam Lidvarov, the one that did like Bis Hillel, said the reason was the Malin B'Kodesh Ve'in Meridin. Always in Kedusha we go up, we don't go down. Continues the Gemara. Tonu Rabbonon. Ner Chanukah Mitzvah La'Nicho Al Pesach Beisoy Mibachutz. The preferred place, the best place, and possibly the only place where the Menorah should be put on Chanukah is the door of your home towards the outside. Im Dor Ba'alia. If he's living in the top floor in an attic <coughs> and there's no room outside, Rashi explains Pesach Beso means at the entrance or at the Chotzer. The homes used to be open to a yard and the yard used to be bordering to the Shusar Abim and that's where they would light the Menorah. But if you lived in an attic, you didn't have a Chotzer, where did you light? You would light in the window facing the Roshul Sorabim so that as many people as possible can see it. And that's the mitzvah of Pirsume Nisa. The Menorah on Hanukkah is there in order to publicize the miracle of Hanukkah. In times where there was a dangerous and uh, the Goyim did not let us light the Hanukkah candles, the, and therefore, when you lit the candles, it was dangerous if the public would see it. Manicho al shulchanu you light the menorah on your table in your dining room or any table in your house, and that's enough. At least the people in the home will have a persumanissa, will see the candles. And nowadays, that there's no sakona, most poskim say that we revert back to the halacha of the way it should be that a person should light pesach beisoy mi and there are some poiskim who still keep the custom of lighting inside. And like we said before, the practical applications of these sugyas, you have to ask your rov and learn the alochas before Hanukkah. Continues the Gemara, Omar Rova. Tzorich nir acheres lishtamish la'iro. 
we said before, you're not allowed to use or have any benefit from the light of the menorah. And in order for that to be clear, besides for lighting the, the candles of the menorah, you have to light an added candle, which we call the shamash. And since you've got an added candle, it will be apparent to everybody that the light that I'm using to, for my own use is the shamash, and the menorah is not being used for, my, for personal mundane use. Ve'ir if there's a big fire in the vicinity and there's plenty light, and I don't need the light of the menorah, <coughs> then I don't need the shamash to make it clear and evident that I'm not using the lights of the menorah for myself. Ve'ir adam but if he's a very prominent and prestigious person and it's not common for them to use the light of a big fire, they would commonly have a candle, <clears throat> then again, there's a problem. People may think that he's using the candle, the light of the Menorah. <laughs> Therefore, even if you have a big flame, a big fire, <laughs> he has to have a shamash in order that everybody will realize that he's not using the light of the Menorah for his own use. Continues the Gemara. My Hanukkah, on which nest did they make the Yontav of Hanukkah? The Tonur Rabbonon, we learnt in a Braisa, Bechof he, Bekislev, on the 25th of Kislev, Yoyme de Hanukkah, the Hanukkah, the Yontav of the days of Hanukkah start, Tmanya Inyun, these are eight days, Delayla Mispet behind, you're not allowed to say Hespedim, an orgy if somebody dies. Veloilis Anis Behen, you're not allowed to fast on them. They have the alochas, some of the alochas of a Yom Tov. Why? Shekesh and Nichnusu Yavonim Lehechol, when the Greeks entered the Hechol, the base of Migdosh, Tim U Kolashmanim, they made Tome, they touched and destroyed all the pure oils that were going to be used for the, for the Menorah. Kolashmanim Shabahechol. Ukushagovro Malchus Beis Hashmanoi. When the, the, the kingdoms of the Beis Hashmanoi of Klal Yisrael, they, they overpowered the Greeks for Natschom and defeated them. Botku, they searched, they found just a single flask of oil. It was, it was hidden someplace. It had the seal of the Kain Godel on, and it was apparent that the Greeks had not touched it. The problem was there was only enough oil in this flask to light the menorah for one day. <coughs> and it took eight days to, to make new oil. A miracle happened. And this was single flask of oil lit for eight, full, for eight days. The next year came again. The Chofei Kislev. They fixed it as a yontav, behalil vaydah, in order to say halil after shacharis and to say al hanisim in the bracha of vaydah. Continues the Gemara. Tnan hosam. We learnt in a mission in Baba Kama. Gates, a spark, hayetze mitachas apatish, that gets released from under the hammer of one of the workers. Vyotza vahizik. And this spark left the, the desk of, of this worker and it caused damage. Chayev, he's Chayev, you should have been careful. You created a spark and you caused damage. Gomol, Sheton, Pishton. However, if you have a camel that's loaded with flax, and he's traveling in the street, and there's so much flax on the back of this camel that some of the flax goes into this shop where there's a spark. And the flax got burnt from the, from the fire, the spark, what was going on in the shop. And it burnt down the whole mansion. Then Bala Gomol is Chayev. The owner of the camel is Chayev. Why did you load it with so much flax that it could not stay in the street? It would go into the shop where it would, it would pose a danger. However, if this Chenveni put his candle outside the shop and then somebody's got a camel laden with flax going in the Rosh Hashanah and gets burnt by the candle that's outside, then of course Chenveni Chayev. Of course the Chenvin is Chayev, because who told you to put a candle outside the Rosh Hashanah? You're a mazik. Rabbi Yehuda Oimer, Rabbi Yehuda says that, however, B'nei Chanukah, if somebody puts his Chanukah candles outside his home, and a gomel comes and 
and uh, a camel loaded with, with pishton gets burned from the menorah, potter is potter. Why? Because he, it's a mitzvah. He has a shush to, to put the candle there. And whoever's coming down the road with a camel and flax has to make sure not to get too close to the menorahs. Omer Vina, Mishum Durabah, Zoyse Meris, it's apparent from this halacha that near Chanukah mitzvah lanicha basoycha sorrow. Part of the mitzvah of lighting Chanukah candles is that it should be low down, ten tvochim off the ground, within ten tvochim. If there was no such halacha in Hilchas Chanukah, why are you putting your, your candles so, so low down? Put the candles high up, above the height of the flax on a laden camel, and then it will not pose a danger to anyone. The fact that we say that even if it gets burnt, the person who's lit the menorah is potter, it must be that the mitzvah of menorah requires him to put it that low down. Because if, it, if the facts would be that in Hilchus Chanukah, it's lekatchila to put the candles above ten tvochim, the person who's who uh, the owner of the camel can say, you should have put the candle higher than the camel with the one with the person riding on it. Says the Gemara of Dilma Tuva Osi It could be that in Hilchas Chanukah you're allowed to put the candle higher up, and the reason that the Chachomim allowed us to put it lower down, even though it could pose a danger for the camel and the flax, is because if we we force a person to go to too much exertion and too much effort to put the candles high up, they may not bother, they may just neglect the mitzvah of Neir Chanukah. To stop that happening, the Chachamim said, we want to make it easy for you, you can light even Lamato Me'asarot Fachim. Continues the Gemara, Omer of Kahana, Dora Ash Rav Nosen Bar Minyuma Mishmedu Rav Tanchim. There's a drasha that was said in the name of Rav Tanchim, Neir Shel Chanukah. If you lit the Chanukah candles more than 20 amas, above 20 amas from the ground where the people would see it, psula, then the, the mitzvah of Ne'er Chanukah, it's possible, you're not Yitzah, your mitzvah. Kasuka ukamovi, like the schach of sukkah, has to be within 20 amas, and like the pole going across a movoi, which is what serves as a recognition for the people in the Movoi. You can carry up till here, up to this pole, and not further. And that beam also has to be within 20 Amas. The reason for all three halachas, Ne'er Chanukah, Sukkah and Movoi are all the same. It has to catch a person's eye. If the Schach is too high, the message of the Schach will not penetrate the people in the Sukkah. If the beam on top of a Movoi is too high, the people in the Movoi will not see it, and they may chas v'shalom carry in the Rosh Hashanah. And if the Hanukkah candle is too high, the, nobody will see it, and it will not, you will not be Mekayim, the Pirasum Enissa, which is the main part of the Neir Hanukkah. And the Mirza Shem, in our next year, we're going to carry on the Sugya of Neir Hanukkah.